A long time ago, in the kingdom of Fife, there lived an old man and an old woman. The old man was a quiet sort, very tidy, but his wife was exactly the opposite. She was flighty and excitable, and the neighbours said that she might well be a witch. The old man himself was worried about this, for every month on the new moon, his wife would leave the house late at night and he would not see her again until the next morning and many times he tried to follow her but she always slipped away unseen. Eventually, able to bear it no longer, he straight out asked her, are you a witch? And she said, yes, I am. And if you'll keep my secret, then I'll tell you about my doings and satisfy your curiosity. So, the next new moon, he watched his wife disappear and in the morning when she returned he asked her where have you been and she said that she and her friends had gathered together they'd ridden on hemlock stalks which had turned into horses and they'd hunted about they'd hunted foxes and owls and weasels and finally they'd come to the top of Ben Lomond where they had met with the fairies and there had been fairy ale and fairy food and a fairy piper who played a great tune and they all danced all night and then in the morning they returned home. Well, said the old man, so much for your dancing, you'd have been better to bide here. And the next new moon, off she went again and when she returned the old man asked what she had done and she had said that she and her friends had sat in cockle shells and had sailed across the sea to Norway where they had climbed the highest mountains and they had danced with the trolls and the winter elves there and they'd learned from them some magic words that turned them into smoke and again the old man was not terribly interested but the next new moon his wife had a tale which did excite him for she returned to say that using the words that the elves of Norway had taught them she and her friends had gathered in one of the old women's cottages they'd spoken the magic words turned into smoke gone up the chimney and then they had gone to the house of the Bishop of Carlisle, down his chimney and into his cellar, where they returned to themselves and they drank much of his good wine. Now the old man really liked good wine, and so he really wanted to be part of this. He begged his wife to tell him the magic words, but she would not. So after that he decided he must find out, so he hid in the other old woman's house every new moon. And for many months he was not gratified in his desires but eventually the five old women gathered in that particular house and they walked up to the crook of the chimney and they put their foot in the cauldron and one by one they spoke the magic words and they disappeared in a puff of smoke and went up the chimney so the old man came out from his hiding place and he put his foot in the stirrup of the cauldron he spoke the magic words and he went up the chimney and he saw them ahead of him flying through the air. So he followed them as well as he might. And down the chimney of the Bishop of Carlisle's house. And then in the cellar, they all turned back to themselves. And the old women were not very pleased to see that the old man was with them. But they made the best of it. Now they drank sparingly, for they knew they must fly home in the morning. But the old man drank deep, and eventually he fell asleep. And when the time came to his leave, his wife thought that she might teach him a lesson. So she didn't wake him, she left him sleeping. In the morning, the bishop's servants came down to check the cellars. And they were very surprised to see the old man there and the wine missing. They shook him awake and asked him how he had come to be there. And in his drunken, half-sleeping state, he said he had flown through the air and down the chimney. So they immediately thought that he must be a witch and they took him before the bishop and told the story and the bishop said that the old man must be burned immediately. So the old man was dragged out and chained to a pile of wood and he thought his last day had come and he wished he had stayed home the night before. But he'd forgotten of course that his wife was a witch and although he annoyed her sometimes she was actually quite fond of him. So, as he was waiting to be burned, a grey bird flew down and landed on his head and all the onlookers saw the bird dip down as if to whisper in his ear 
and the old man smiled, and then the grey bird flew away. And then the grey bird, of course, was his wife, and she'd given him the magic words he needed to escape. So he spoke the words, flew into the air, and escaped back home to Fife. And after that, he never again asked his wife what she was doing or attempted to meddle in her business. And they got along very peaceably after that.